I do always like to start off uh, the every show uh, with a summary of what I saw happening in the market. Well, we didn't have a show uh, last week, so I'm going to cover the last two weeks. Uh, this particular chart that you're looking at here is the S&P 500 as of two weeks ago. When, this is the one I showed from, from the last show. And here's what we're looking at, and I think it's very important to kind of understand. We call a primary trend the major trend of the market, be up or down or sideways. And then you've got this secondary trend where you kind of have the market go the other direction and the primary trend. So if you look at that red line there, you know, the primary trend so far for this year is obviously down. Uh, but we had this unbelievable run up going on that started in the middle of June and peaked out there in early August. Uh, and what we kind of have like a checklist of things we'd like to see so that that smaller trend, that would be the secondary trend at the moment, becomes the primary trend and we reestablish an upward trend as the primary trend. So we'd like to see the market breaking through different resistance points. So in other words, where the market has spent a lot of time and a lot of people accumulated shares and they tend to kind of want to sell when it gets back there, eventually that gets dried up and we see strength that goes through. And we did that. We actually broke through three fairly major resistance points all the way up until this point. The next thing we like to see is really the market retrace at least half of the loss uh, that we had. And so that happened. So we did it. We broke through the 50% retracement level. And then next, in this particular case, we like to see it break through the 200-day moving average, which is that blue line that you see there. And so it got really close. It got within one point of breaking through the 200-day moving average, uh, and, it, and it fell. And so it's a couple weeks ago. It was still hanging out there. And then ultimately, if it would have broken through, we would like to have seen it you know, break through the trend line, that red line there, and then eventually continue to have enough strength to drag the 200-day moving average into the upward direction instead of the downward direction. Uh, unfortunately, over this last two weeks, uh, here's what happened, right? So that little piece of hanging up there eventually kind of fell down. And then if you look, there's one big red bar there. That's last Friday. Uh, and that is where the Federal Reserve does their Jackson Hole meeting every, every year. And Chairman Powell came out, had an eight-minute speech, did not allow any questions. And the Federal Reserve is very, very interested in trying to see the stock market come down. Uh, they have said exactly that, which is kind of amazing. Uh, and what happened was, during this run-up, some of the questions and some of the things that were asked of the Federal Reserve were interpreted as, hey, we're looking at the data. And the interpretation there was, if they're looking at the data, the data is getting better, and we might be seeing a situation where they start to reduce rates. Matter of fact, the market was expecting less rate increases than the Fed said they might do, and expecting a rate decrease sooner than the Fed said they would do. And so the market's responding to that. Because again, market's looking forward six to 18 months. If rates are going to come down and inflation's going to get under control, then the market can start to take off. And the Fed doesn't like this because they're trying to fight a very high inflationary scenario right now where if people have a lot of money in growth in their homes, growth in their uh, stock portfolios, their 401ks, their IRAs, whatever it is, they feel more wealthy. And so they start to spend more. And the Federal Reserve wants to help make us feel like we shouldn't be spending because it is one of the problems people are spending. Matter of fact, we saw a nearly record amount of credit card debt accumulated in July by households here in the U.S., and so what's happening is there's this huge pent-up demand. People want to get out there. They want to do things. They want to go out to eat. They want to travel. Uh, and even if they don't have the money, they're going to borrow the money. Uh, we had this very large amount of savings that was there from the pandemic and all the money that was handed out. It seems like a lot of that has dried up and things are more expensive now. So, of course, uh, some people are compensating for that by borrowing. So, you know, and the Fed wants all of this to stop so that they can get inflation back from 9.1% at the high back down to 2%. Um, and so that big red bar just continued all the way through this week. We had basically lower lows all week up until yesterday. Yesterday we had a low that we hit and then we reversed, actually a pretty nice reversal, and ended up for the day. A very nice run right at the end of the day. And, but today's been really fascinating. Today's an important day because today's the day that they report the job picture for last month, for August. And so 
uh, the market opened up. The numbers were pretty good. So we had 315,000 jobs created. The expectation was for 298,000. So that's, you know, that's okay. We don't want like 500 and some odd thousand jobs, unfortunately, in this environment like we had last month. Uh, and we don't want, you know, 100,000 jobs. So meeting expectations is a really good thing here. And the market was up one, one and a half percent, depending on what, you know, index you're looking at this morning. Uh, and then, of course, we had the scenario where uh, unemployment actually went up. It went from 3.5% to 3.7%, which normally is a bad thing. But again, the Federal Reserve is looking for softer job market. We have too many job openings. We have a situation where there's not enough people coming out to work, and that causes the possibility of higher wages, and you get this big cycle that can really drive inflation. Wages did not grow as much as expected in August. Again, normally a bad thing, but in this particular case is a good thing. Uh, and we had a higher participation rate. So the total number of people, I think it was 367,000 new people entered the workforce. Uh, and so that's really needed because the problem is we're at 62.4% of the U.S. population is currently working. Uh, and they need that to come up as much as possible to kind of alleviate the pressure that's on the job market. And so today's report was actually very good. And most of the data that we're seeing is quite good. Gas prices have been coming down almost every day for almost three months now. Uh, you've got a scenario where the headline inflation, whether it's CPI or PCE, is coming down. Core inflation on all the different measures have been coming down. Uh, still very high, right? So that's part of the problem. But the trend is on the downward slope. Uh, but the Federal Reserve doesn't want your accounts <laughs> to be worth a lot. And they don't want to see these breakthroughs. They don't want to see this market take off because it's counterproductive for them to try to bring down inflation. Again, if we feel wealthy, we're going to possibly spend or borrow or do whatever we have. Uh, and so this, this is part of the program. They're raising rates. They're trying to reduce liquidity. They're reducing their balance sheet. And they're talking as aggressive as they possibly can. And this week, one of the big catalysts was one of the Fed uh, presidents talking about how she felt that the market uh, is still off, that it would be over 4% that the Fed fund rate gets to uh, by you know next year, uh, which is more than the market thinks, and that we wouldn't have any rate in decreases in 2023, which of course the market felt like there might be a possibility of rate decreases early in 2023. So that created another downturn and such too. So I will say one thing in my opinion, what they're talking about, we call it job owning. You know, they're trying to talk the market down. You can see it's working, right? Um, but it doesn't always work long term because the data eventually kind of plays out. The one fear that we all have is that the Federal Reserve doesn't interpret the data properly. This has happened before uh, and over raises rates and slows things down too much. And the stock market suffers because of that, even if possibly it didn't need to. So this is a good time to be cautious until we see what happens with the Federal Reserve. We get more data coming in that's continuing to show you know, improvements in some of these areas. There's lots of geopolitical things that can happen with Russia, obviously, controlling a lot of energy for Europe. Uh, there's a situation in China. They're having some economic problems. They're actually reducing interest rates there to try to support the country. Uh, so some things to watch out for that are out there. But the big picture right now has really to do with what the Federal Reserve is saying and doing and what the data is showing. So uh, the problem that we're having right now in this particular downturn, if we go back to kind of where we were, you know, a couple weeks ago, and we look at what's happened here in the last two weeks, uh, we've broken through a lot of pieces that are important. We've retraced uh, half of what we gained. That's not good. We broke through uh, two of the resistance levels that we broke through on the way up. So we're still bouncing off of this last one, uh, which is a good thing. Hopefully we hold. Uh, we, do, we do have a higher low here. Again, that could be good. So, uh, you know, we'll have to wait and see what's happening right now. We are pulling some of the risk off the table, reducing some of our stock market exposure just as we watch this happening. Just because, again, I look at it like we're standing on the edge of a cliff. You know, we haven't fallen off that cliff, but we need to be careful 
uh, and we need to basically, you know, get a parachute on, and that parachute for me is just reducing risk, and we take some of our stock market holdings and move them into T-bill ETFs, you know, at least for the short term, just to wait and see what happens here, because we really don't want to be unprepared and fall off that cliff with no parachute. So I think it's a good time to be a little bit careful uh, as far as that goes, and that's what we're advocating at this point in time. So uh, anyway, that's my my outlook for this last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, it's an, it's an incredible time frame with all of the high inflation, lockdowns in China. Uh, we've got this whole scenario going on in Ukraine and Russia and all these other areas, these inputs that are happening, pent up demand. It's a really, really incredible time frame. Very difficult to figure out what's going to happen. Uh, stay diversified. Uh, make sure you got your parachute is what I would say at this point in time. So anyway, looking forward to being able to talk to you again next week about what I, what I see happening.